See? You're too strong. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna have to cut that out. <laughs> no, I'll keep it in. I don't want to make you do too much editing. In today's video, we will be discussing study techniques with Sophie, who was Ducks of <laughs> Napier Girls. One of the smartest people I know. If I were you, I'd be taking notes. I know I am when I'll be editing. Hi everyone, uh, pretty excited to be here. Thanks Junius for asking me along. Uh, should be good and hopefully you get some decent tips out of it. So the first question I want to ask is, do you do any preparation before a module starts? Do you like watch a YouTube video to pre-read or anything like that? Uh, so I feel like with us, it's a very quick turnaround between modules. So we'll sort of have a module test that night and then sort of start the new module the next day. So it's a bit stressful in terms of turnaround time. So I don't really do anything like watching a YouTube video or things like that. I'll sort of have a brief look over, look at what sort of lectures we're going to be having in that module. Um, sort of before each lecture I might try to look over just the lecture slides if I've got time. Um, just to sort of get a general idea of what's going to be going on so I'm not completely lost in the lecture. <laughs> it was definitely helpful sort of reading over and then if you came across something that you didn't quite understand, you're thinking what the heck is that word, you know you can look it up beforehand. Um, yeah, it just it makes the lecture a bit more engaging rather than just listening to someone talk about something you have no idea about. <laughs> Say you've pre-read. Mm -hmm. During a lecture, how do you take notes? Uh, so I use OneNote. Um, I'm not an iPad kid. Um, so yeah, I'll just have the slides and then I'll just type sort of notes next to the lecture slides as the lecturer progresses. So I can type pretty fast, uh, but I won't transcribe exactly what the lecturer is saying, you know, verbatim, I think that's yes, the word. Good. I'll just sort of try to get the main points, but you know, sometimes you get a bit caught up and you find yourself just type, type, typing away what they're saying. But uh, I sort of sort it all out after the lecture's been, yeah. <laughs> After the lecture has finished, how long is it before you review that lecture and how do you review? Uh, so I've definitely tried to improve a bit this year in terms of my time frame. Uh, so I'll sort of try to review each lecture within the next few days if I can, uh, just sort of permitting on what's happening with our timetable. Because sometimes, you know, we'll have four lectures in a day and it'll be a bit stressful, uh, but sort of Max, I'll try to do it like within a week. So, you know, I'll try to get most of it done by the weekend. So in terms of reviewing, I, I'll i sort of collate uh, what I've written next to my lecture slides, like with the lecture slides. Cause you know, sometimes the lecturer will expand a bit on a point and so obviously it's a bit more important kind of thing. They don't always put everything that is important on the lecture slides, unfortunately. Um, so I use Microsoft Word to sort of do notes for each lecture, which are collating um, the lecture slides with my notes that I've written on the side. And so I'd say they're quite explainy. <laughs> um, they're not super concise, if you know what I mean, because I do want to like make sure I'm getting all the points kind of things, explaining all the learning objectives quite well. Something else I'll do as well, we have this Google Drive folder with uh, past students' notes from previous years. So if I find that the lecturer maybe hasn't explained something uh, as well as I would have liked them to, and I'm sort of thinking, what the heck's going on here? Uh, I'll either refer back to that, so where the lecturer's done the same lecture in one of the previous years, and look at those students' notes to see if it makes a bit more sense. Otherwise, I'll just look it up. <laughs> yeah, so that's sort of how I get uh, quite nice and clear notes, so everything's sort of well organized in my head. Do you copy and paste things from the lecture slides or do you try to rewrite these ideas and concepts in your own words? Most of the time I'll try not to exactly write what they've written. I'll definitely, like, like I copy and paste like diagrams and stuff onto my uh -huh. document because obviously I'm, I'm really bad at drawing. I, yeah, I guess I try to put it in my own words as best I can, but sometimes, you know, how they say it in the lecture, lecture is the best way to write it, kind of thing. I just make sure I understand what's what I'm writing, yeah. Okay, so after you've written these explainy type notes, what do you do after? Okay, what I probably should have been doing, I think, because our modules run for a few weeks, sort of thing, 
I probably should have been doing a review session maybe once a weekend or something uh, just so I wasn't sort of losing the pre like the earlier lectures content um, but what I did do after making these notes sort of depended on what module we were doing because some of them are definitely a lot more conceptual rather than just straight memorizing so um, for Genetto Urinary, what I did for that one was I actually made sort of a summary sheet um, for each lecture, so just like an A4 piece of paper, um, just writing down sort of the main concepts that I thought would come up and like all the useful information. I mean for the anatomy lectures I pretty much had to write everything that was in my notes because we know that he tests pretty much everything. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and then for clinical pharmacology, which was definitely a lot of memorizing. Uh, I actually decided to uh, do Anki cards for that. Um, even though I find it quite time consuming to make all the cards, it was definitely much more helpful to just be having to do that active recall like that. Um, so yeah, I sort of chop and change depending on what I feel about the content, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Say we, we're we getting to the exam period, exams coming up, yep. what do you do? Study sessions? Do you do past papers? Uh, yeah, so I do a, quite a few study sessions with um, two of my other good friends. Uh, so what we do is we sort of go through quite a few lectures each day, um, sort of in the few days leading up to it, like sort of that week before. Uh, and pretty much we'll just talk through all the content that we've covered in that lecture um, and sort of quiz each other with questions about it. That's sort of how we test each other on it. And it's also a good time to uh, talk through concepts that we didn't really understand by ourselves. It's quite good to get someone else's perspective on that because, you know, they might understand it a lot better than you do. We don't really get past papers, <laughs> which is a bit annoying. Um, so I definitely find the group sessions very helpful in terms of quizzing that way. Uh, but we do get a few questions, like I know for clinical pharmacology they sort of put a few practice questions at the end of each lecture, so I'd work through those and sort of see where my gaps were and things like that. But yeah, unfortunately we don't get that much practice, so it's sort of very dependent on you testing yourself or just getting other people to come up with questions to quiz you. So apart from all this review and group study, what else did you do to help supplement all of this? Yep, so uh, what I try to do is pick out the really important stuff that I'm pretty certain will come up in the test. Uh, so like for GU, what I did was, you know, write out all the what's happening in each part of the nephron, um, how the diuretics work, like pretty much all the high yield stuff. I'd try to write that out from memory and then fill in any gaps that I had because I think just since we're getting so much content you really do have to be quite picky and think about what's actually going to come up and what's going to be the most useful kind of thing. So yeah I think that's definitely helpful trying to go through each lecture and pick out the high yield things and just really quizzing yourself on those bits and getting those parts nailed. <laughs> Very comprehensive tutorial yeah. Sophie. <laughs> oh, uh, no. You mentioned you use Onki for clinical pharmacology. Mm -hmm. Do you have any tips for people using Onki? Yeah, so it's a very, it's a good tool, but you really need to figure out how to use it for you, you know, what works best for you. So I found last year I was making so many cards that it was sort of stressing me out more than it was being helpful. Um, because, you know, when you go on and you've got a thousand due cards, it's not uh, the best thing. So what I tried to aim to do this year was sort of keep my cards, my card count a lot lower. So I'd really just be picking out the higher yield stuff. Uh, so I'd sort of aim for maybe only 20 to 30 for each lecture. Um, probably not including image occlusion stuff because that obviously adds on quite a few. But yeah, just sort of trying to keep your cards to the very, I don't know. <laughs> To just the things you find important? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, you've got to be a good judge of information. I feel like that's an acquired skill that you're sort of going to get better at uh, during your time at university, you know, thinking about will this actually come up on the test or is the lecturer just talking about this because they're interested <laughs> in it kind of thing. <laughs> um, yeah, so definitely trying to keep them 
at a bit of a lower count and just to higher yield things because you don't want to be overloading your brain with unnecessary information you want to make sure you have the high yield stuff nailed <laughs> yeah. so sophie thanks for all the tips do you have any last words of advice uh yeah i think it's probably just really figuring out what works for you which probably isn't the advice you want to hear but it's very much a case of trial and error you know you're going to get things wrong before you find something that is really working for you and like i said you might have to sort of switch your methods depending on what kind of information you're learning so yeah hopefully you found something helpful out of this thanks for watching guys we are really we really appreciate you guys watching we hope that you can learn something from the super smart sophie <laughs> good alliteration <laughs> oh wow i didn't even realize all right thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one